grade 6 hopefully you are fine and doing well so in today's science lesson we are going to continue our chapter number 2 life and living things we learned about the different life processes we learned about the cells today we are going to learn about animal and plant cell on page number 20 let's start reading animal and plant cells have similar jobs to do they take in food release energy get rid of waste grow and reproduce so you all know that animal and plant cells uh, uh, they they take in the food they get all the energy they need from the food then they get rid of the waste they grow and they reproduce both animal and plant cells do this job both animal and plants do this but their structures however are not the same animal and plant cells they might do similar functions but they their structures are not the same let's see how they're not the same animal cell versus plant cell the diagram shows an animal cell from inside a human cheek and a plant cell from a leaf this diagram shows animal cell from inside a cheek this is uh, shown from inside of a mi uh, microscope and this is a plant cell from a leaf animal and plant cells have three similarities so now we will learn about the differences and the similarities between the animal cell and the plant cell first of all we have the similarities uh, a nucleus which is the control center of the cell first of all we will learn about the nucleus n u c l e u s nucleus it is a very very important part of the cell <coughs> so nucleus it has a name it is the control center of the cell what is it it is a control center of the cell why is it why it is called a control center the nucleus contains the information that controls everything that goes on in the cell so a nucleus is called the control center because it has all the information that uh, all the information of the cell so, uh, and anything that is to be controlled inside the cell all that information is present inside the nucleus so it is called the control center in animal cell this is the nucleus they have um, they have made a simplified diagram for you this is an animal cell this is a plant cell so this is the nucleus inside an animal cell this is a nucleus inside a plant cell it controls all the information inside the cell second uh, part we have the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is all living matter except for the nucleus it is everything except for the nucleus inside the cell as you can see in the diagram in animal cell this whole portion is the cytoplasm except for the nucleus and in plant cell this this portion is the cytoplasm okay it is a jelly like substance which is fluid can flow so they are telling you uh, how this substance is like it is like a jelly like substance it can easily flow it is like a fluid this whole portion is the cytoplasm and it is jelly like substance the third part we have is cell membrane cell membrane is a thin skin around the outside of the cell so it is the outer covering of the cell okay it prevents the cell contents from escaping but it does allow substances like water and other small molecules to cross in and out of the cell so what is the function of the cell membrane as it is the outer covering it acts like a door so what does it do it prevents the cell contents from escaping it causes the inner molecules from escaping from getting out but and it also allows the substances like water and all the fluids that have to come inside it allows them to come inside of the cell and allows the molecules to go out of the cell okay so it acts like a door so we did three similarities nucleus cytoplasm cell membrane these three are present in both of the animal and plant cell in addition to these plant cells have three major uh, three other important features then we uh, will do the differences these three things are present inside the plant cell these are not present inside the animal cell these are the differences number one is the cell wall cell wall is a rigid firm coating around the outside of the cell membrane so what is a cell wall this is not present in the animal cell animal cell have an outer covering called cell membrane but plants have cell wall too they have cell membrane but they also have cell wall cell wall also acts like a door it is a very rigid form rigid means firm and hard 
it is a hard coating it is present outside of the cell membrane you can see this is the cell membrane and this is the cell wall it helps what is its function it helps the plant cell keep its shape so what does it do it helps the uh, cell to maintain its shape then we have chloroplast chloroplasts contain a green chemical called chlorophyll what does uh, chl chloroplast contain chloroplast have a chemical which is green in color it is called chlorophyll this is very important it is called chlorophyll you can see this is chloroplast these are the tiny uh, green chloroplast they have a green chemical inside which is called chlorophyll this is the chemical which enables green plants to use the sun's energy to make food during photosynthesis so what is the function of this chlorophyll this chemical this green chemical what does it do it enables the plants it enables the green plants to use the sun energy to make food during photosynthesis it helps the plant to make their food uh, through the process of photosynthesis this green chlorophyll does this job then we have vacuole the vacuole is a large space in the middle of the cell it is filled with a fluid called cell sap so in plant cell this is the vacuole this is very large in size it is present in the middle of the cell it consists of a cell sap inside of it it is a fluid okay so we did the three differences uh, the these three structures are not present in the animal cell the cell wall which is the coating chloroplast that help in the photosynthesis and vacuole which are present in the middle and they have a fluid called cell sap now let's do the question answers test yourself question number one why is the nucleus called the control center of the cell you have done this its answer is over here because it has all the information that of the cell you have to answer this question from here this is for your homework question number two what is the cytoplasm what is it like so its answer is over here where we learnt about the cytoplasm it is the jelly like substance you have uh, first of all you have to write what is it it's still here and then what is it like it is jelly like substance third question is what is a cell vacuole i uh, told you about the vacuole over here so you have to answer the question from here this this is for your homework let's move on to page number 21 special cells for special jobs now we learned about the cells we learned about the animal and the plant cell now we will learn about different cells present in the body special cells for special jobs humans and other multicellular organisms are made of different types of cells each cell is uh, suited to the job it has to do so humans have a lot of cells in their bodies each cell performs its specific function it has to do its job nerve cells <clears throat> nerve cells have long thin fibers they carry messages from one part of the body to another so first of all we have the nerve cells they have they are like uh, long thread like they have thin fibers uh, they and their function is that they carry the messages of the body from one part to the other like they carry the messages to the brain and other parts where it is needed the second kind of cells is epithelial cells epithelial cells are thin and flat how are they like they are thin and they are flat uh, where are they found inside the body they are present in they are found in layers covering surfaces such as the skin lining of the blood vessels and the elementary canal so where are they present this is very important they are present in the skin they are present in the lining of the blood vessels and they are present in the elementary canal what is the function of epithelial cells these cells help in protection and absorption so they help in the protection they help to guard and they absorb they are uh, responsible for absorption then we have uh, pollen grains pollen grains are also cells some pollen grains have a spiky surface to help them stick to the bodies of insects others have tiny wings to enable them to be carried by the wind so uh, pollen grains they look like this they have spiky surface they have little spikes are present on their body and uh, what are what is the uh, function of these spikes these spikes help them to stick to the bodies of insects so pollen grains they stick to the bodies of insects and those inst insects goes to other plants and they help in the reproduction of the they help in the pollination of the uh, plants and others have tiny wings to enable them to be carried by the wind some of them have spikes so that they uh, so that they can get attached to the insects and some of them have tiny wings so that they can be carried away by the wind so both of these processes 
they have uh, uh, that they can stick to the bodies of insects and they can be carried by the wings both of these from both of these can help in pollination both of these adaptations can help in pollination okay then we have red blood cells red blood cells carry oxygen around the body so what is the function of red blood cells red blood cells they transport oxygen what do they do they transport oxygen around the body they have a large surface area to pick up lots of oxygen so what do they do they have what is their body like they have very large surface area as you can see in this diagram they have a very large surface area why do they have large surface area so that they can pick up a lot of oxygen in their bodies and then they can carry it to the other parts easily uh, a lot of oxygen okay so this was the red blood cells we did the pollen grains epithelial and nerve cells let's do did you know the cell membrane is only 0.00001 millimeters thick this is a measurement given to you and this is a measurement of cell membrane okay this is very important then we have test yourself name three types of cells in your body you can name the three types of cell as we have learned nerve cell epithelial cell and red blood cell okay what are epithelial cells epithelial cells you can uh, write the answer from over here they are thin and flat they are present in the uh, skin elementary canal blood vessel and their function then we have why do red blood cells have large surface area as i told you <clears throat> they have large surface area so they so that they can pick up a lot of oxygen and transport it to the different parts of the body then we have how are pollen grains adapted to help plant pollination you can answer this question from over here that they have a spiky surface and they have tiny wings how you have to answer this question from here this is your homework thank you